Hello and welcome to ExcelExperts.com. Today we're looking at IRR, Excel's function that will give you the internal rate of return. Now, I think a very important thing to do here is to explain IRR in a really simple fashion and then try and build it up and explain what it's actually doing using a slightly more complicated example. So, here we have two cash flows. What is a cash flow? Well, a minus number means it's coming out of your bank and a positive number means that it's going into your bank. So we have two annual cash flows. Year zero means right now, today, and year one means in exactly a year's time. The IRR function will return the annual rate and it assumes that the cash flows are entered as annual cash flows. That's very important. So if this were an investment and I paid out 100 today and I got 100 in a year's time, well, it's a pretty awful investment. Uh, what's the return? It's zero. It's nothing. My return is zero. Um, that's pretty much what... I'm getting in the bank right now with uh, base rates down at 0.5%. So this is actually a realistic example. Let's calculate the IRR equals IRR, control shift A, enter the values. So those two, I'll have a guess. Well, I know the guess, it's zero. And there you go, 0%. Nothing spectacular there. Let's say the government hikes interest rates and uh, I'm able to get back 110 in a year's time. That would be nice. Well, the IRR is 10%. So 10% of this is 10. Added it, add to this is 110. And that's your number, 110. So whatever over 100 this is will be the percentage and I'll just demonstrate that to you 130 will return 30% 150 50% 90 minus 10% okay very clear what it's doing there suppose we have a slightly more complicated set of cash flows 1, 2, 3 years 10 10 and uh, 110. Let's increase the range of the function. Well, 110 in three years' time and two payments of 10, IRR 10%. Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? If I get 10 every year and then 110 back at the end, the rate of return for that should be 10%. So the IRR function there doesn't really add any value to you. But let's say you've got 30 in year two. Hmm. Well now, to try and calculate that internal rate of return in your head, that's very tricky. So this function is actually very useful for you. So let me explain a bit more what it's actually doing. Suppose we were to take that cash flow and we were to invest it sorry well, we have borrowed here so we've, we we're going to pay interest so I've borrowed that money it's gone out of my bank and in a year's time that borrowing is going to be greater because so I've got to pay some interest what interest am I paying well I'll just pay this rate here uh, so that's 110 and then over three years, that gets 133. Okay, that's this cash flow, that's this one, and this is that one. Okay, I'm going to do the same for this one. So that goes to 12.1. I'm going to do the same for this one. So that goes to 11. Now, another way of looking at IRR is that it is the rate at which when you sum all of those cash flows invested and reinvested at every point in time they sum to zero you've been listening to excelexperts.com any more questions on irr 
go on the website and ask on the forum. Thank you very much.